Hello and welcome to Gabriel's 3D Printing. Today we'll be looking at this Flexi Rex uploaded by Dr. Lex. First things first, we're going to go down to developer notes, see if they have any print specifications, and they say no rafts, no supports, resolution of 0 0.2, infill of 15, and that's basically it. So once you're happy and you read all this, go up here to the down and all files, and you should get a folder similar to this. Now all you have to do is click on this STL and drag it to your preferred slicer of choice and give it a few seconds to render in. Once it's finished loading in, we can now mess with all the settings. So first we're going to go over here to the profile section and click on this tab. And we're going to select a standard quality, which should be a 0.2 millimeter layer height, which was the recommendation from the developer. This pops up, so I'm going to click on the discard to erase all previous profile modifications. Next, we're going to go to the infill tab, click on it, and we're going to change the infill density to 15%. So whatever number's there, just change it down to 15. And that's basically how much material is inside of the model. So we're going to lower it down to a low 15%. Next, we're going to go to supports tab, and we're going to make sure that this is unchecked, because we do not need supports for the model. Afterwards, we'll go to build pit adhesion, and the developer said you do not need any rafts for the model, meaning you don't need any build pit adhesion. But the thing is that if you have poor adhesion, or if you do not level your bed, this dinosaur will not stick, and you're going to have a really weird looking dinosaur because you might have uh, some sort of layer shift in the middle of these smaller parts, especially near the tail. There's plenty of surface area with the uh, model and near the top of the head. But down here where you get thinner and thinner, you might have a lot more issues with the adhesion. So, that being said, if you do not have proper adhesion, like if you don't use hairspray or have some sort of uh, friction bed, then I highly recommend you add a brim. Especially if you're a beginner and, you, and you're not sure if your bed is leveled and whatnot. Add a brim if needed. So skirt, brim, you're going to click on that. And uh, the brim will be a little bit annoying to take off, but do take your time and whatnot. But if you do have perfect adhesion and you have no problems with that, leave it as skirt. Because like I said, the developer says no, no uh, build pit adhesion is needed. But if you do think your model's not going to stick, definitely add a brim. And other than that, you're uh, more than set, so... Once you're ready, click on the blue slice button and give it a few seconds to slice up. Once it's finished slicing, you will see a time estimate of roughly 2 hours and 25 minutes, but that will depend on the printer you're using and the settings you used, as well as a estimated filament usage of 15 grams. Now you always preview the print and take a look, see if anything weird or funky is going on, and everything looks perfectly normal, so all you have to do now is save the file and send it over to your printer. Whenever you remove the model off the build plates, you may have to break the joints free. In order to do that, simply grab on the dinosaur and push back and forth until every joint is completely free. Even the small little tail one should be able to move freely. Here's the model once all processing has been completed. The dinosaur works completely as intended, and everything looks pretty good with high quality. This model was definitely made for a younger audience than mine, such that it's pretty thick, it's hard to break, and there's not a lot of sharp corners that could cut a younger child. This was definitely a quick and easy print, and I do recommend it for anybody thinking about printing it.